Hello everyone, and welcome back to another video from our channel, Who Died Today America. In this video we'll be highlighting American celebrities who have passed away in the last few days, along with other notable figures from around the world. Before we proceed, we kindly ask you to show your love and support by giving this video a like. It means a lot to us. Thank you. Now let's begin. The spotlight of Atlanta's entertainment scene dimmed with the sudden passing of Wanda Smith, a beloved radio personality and comedian. Known for her long-standing role on V103's Frank and Wanda in the Morning, Smith's vibrant presence left an indelible mark on the city. Born on October 11, 1966, Smith's death on October 12, 2024, a day after her 58th birthday, has deeply saddened fans and colleagues alike. Smith began her radio journey with V103 in 1998, co-hosting alongside Frank Ski. Over two decades, her infectious humor and community involvement made her a cherished figure in Atlanta radio. Despite a brief hiatus from 2012 to 2018, she returned to V103, continuing her tenure until her departure in 2019. Smith's quick wit and memorable moments, including a controversial interview with comedian Cat Williams, highlighted her unflinching authenticity. In addition to her radio success, Smith was a talented comedian. She contributed as a writer for popular shows like Deaf Comedy Jam and Comic View, and maintained a regular set at the Atlanta Comedy Theater. Her comedic talents also extended to film, where she appeared in Tyler Perry's Medea Goes to Jail and Medea's Witness Protection. Beyond entertainment, Smith was a passionate advocate for the community, often working behind the scenes to support those in need. Wanda's impact went far beyond making us laugh, V103 Senior VP Rick Caffey remarked, reflecting on her deep commitment to service. Smith is survived by her husband, Lamoris Sellers, and their three children. As tributes pour in, many remember her as more than just a radio star. She was a friend, mentor, and beacon of positivity. V103 will honor her legacy during a special tribute on Sunday morning praise, celebrating the life of a woman who brought joy to so many. Though the cause of her death remains undisclosed, her legacy as a trailblazer in comedy and radio will resonate for years to come. Rest in peace, Wanda Smith. Your voice and laughter will never fade from Atlanta's heart. The spotlight of entertainment dimmed with the passing of Michelle LaFrance, a multi-talented actress, model, and advocate. Born July 10, 1978, in New Haven, Connecticut, LaFrance's life journey was one marked by passion, creativity, and compassion. She passed away at the age of 45, following a battle with cervical cancer, leaving behind a legacy of artistic contributions and service to others. Michelle's rise began when she was crowned Miss Connecticut USA in 2003, representing her state at the Miss USA pageant. After earning a business degree from the University of Massachusetts, she pursued her dream of acting in New York and Los Angeles. Her screen credits include her role as Misty in HBO's Entourage, and appearances in independent films like The Downside of Bliss and Road to the Well. Beyond her on-screen work, she collaborated with acclaimed writers, contributing to creative storytelling projects that reflected her love for the arts. LaFrance's talents extended beyond acting. She worked as a sommelier, combining her passion for wine with travel adventures, including camel rides in Dubai and the harvest season in Napa Valley. A dedicated advocate, she supported organizations like the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation, Ronald McDonald House, and the Susan G. Komen Foundation, exemplifying her lifelong commitment to making a positive difference. Michelle's impact was felt not only through her professional endeavors, but also in the relationships she nurtured. She is survived by her parents, Kathleen and Roger LaFrance, her siblings, Danielle and David, and nephews Jake and Mason. A celebration of her life will be held at a future date, 
with arrangements managed by Hodges Funeral Home in Naples, Florida. As her loved ones reflect on her vibrant life, they remember a woman who embraced every adventure with grace and left behind a legacy of love, art, and service. The tattoo world lost a bright light with the passing of Ryan Hadley, an accomplished artist known for his appearance on Ink Master. Hadley passed away at 46 after a brave battle with seminoma cancer. His family confirmed his death on social media, sharing that he left this world surrounded by loved ones and expressing gratitude for the legacy he left in both art and tattooing. Hadley's journey in tattoo artistry spanned 25 years, a career that was elevated by his participation in season six of Ink Master. Known for his precision and creativity, Hadley quickly earned a reputation among fans and clients, making a lasting impression. His work extended beyond reality TV fame. He was the proud owner of a gallery in Indiana, which served as both a creative space and community hub. In December 2023, Hadley disclosed his diagnosis with seminoma cancer, a rare germ cell tumor. Despite aggressive chemotherapy, he shared with his 32,000 Instagram followers that the treatment had failed and the cancer had spread to his liver and lungs. Hadley openly documented his final months, expressing gratitude for the support he received, but also heartbreak over leaving his children behind. His raw honesty resonated with many as he faced the end with courage, saying, death doesn't scare me. It's the fact of abandonment with my kids that pisses me off. Throughout his battle, Hadley's family created a GoFundMe to help cover medical and end-of-life expenses, and his supporters rallied around him. His last months were marked by reflection and connection, ensuring his legacy would continue through his art, fans, and loved ones. Ryan Hadley's untimely passing leaves a void in the tattoo community, where his artistry and passion will be remembered as legendary. As his family wrote, while his life was cut short, the legacy he left behind in the art and tattoo world is immeasurable. Hadley's children, friends, and fans will carry forward his spirit, ensuring his influence and memory endure for years to come. The spotlight of entertainment dimmed with the passing of Chad McQueen, an actor, racing enthusiast, and the son of film legend, Steve McQueen. Known for portraying the tough and rebellious Dutch in the Karate Kid films, McQueen passed away at 63 at his Palm Desert ranch. His death was attributed to organ failure, a result of complications from injuries he sustained in a 2020 fall. Born on December 28, 1960 in Los Angeles, Chadwick Stephen McQueen grew up in Malibu, surrounded by Hollywood and the fast-paced world of motorsports. He was the son of Filipino-born actress Neely Adams and Steve McQueen, whose cinematic legacy shaped Chad's own journey in film and racing. Although he followed his father's footsteps into acting, Chad's true passion lay on the racetrack. McQueen made his mark on screen as Dutch, a mischievous Cobra Kai student in The Karate Kid and its sequel. While his character became iconic within the franchise's universe, McQueen did not return for The Karate Kid Part 3 or the Netflix series Cobra Kai. His performance as Dutch, however, remains etched in fans' memories, cementing his place in pop culture history. Beyond acting, McQueen's love for auto racing was a lifelong pursuit. He began racing at just 10 years old and launched a professional career, competing in events with the Sports Car Club of America. His promising racing journey ended abruptly in 2006, following a serious crash at Daytona International Speedway, which led him to retire from the sport. In 2010, McQueen channeled his passion into founding McQueen Racing, a high-performance car and motorcycle company. Today, his children Chase and Madison continue to run the business, preserving their father's legacy along with their famous grandfathers. Chad McQueen is survived by his mother, Neely Adams, his second wife, Jeannie, his children Chase, Madison, and Stephen, best known for his roles in The Vampire Diaries and Legacies, and his grandson, Michael. 
His family issued a heartfelt statement, honoring Chad's life and asking for privacy during this time. The spotlight on the world of gospel music dimmed with the passing of Sissy Houston, the Grammy-winning singer and matriarch of a musical dynasty. Known for her extraordinary vocal talent and as the mother of the legendary Whitney Houston, Sissy passed away at the age of 91. She was under hospice care at her home in Newark, New Jersey, surrounded by family as she succumbed to complications from Alzheimer's disease. Born Emily Drinkard on September 30, 1933, in Newark, Sissy began her musical journey with her siblings, forming the gospel group The Drinkard Four. Her career blossomed when she became part of the renowned vocal group The Sweet Inspirations, singing backup for iconic artists like Elvis Presley, Aretha Franklin, and Van Morrison. Their harmonies graced classics like Brown Eyed Girl and Ain't No Way, solidifying their place in music history. In the late 1960s, Sissy transitioned from backup vocalist to solo performer, leaving the sweet inspirations to pursue her own path. Her soaring voice became a fixture in the recording studios, contributing to tracks alongside legends such as Luther Vandross, Paul Simon, and Beyonce. Her work as a session singer resulted in over 600 recorded songs across multiple genres, and her distinctive sound accompanied her daughter Whitney throughout her career. Sissy's talent was recognized with two Grammy Awards for Best Traditional Soul Gospel Album, awarded for Face to Face in 1997, and He Leadeth Me in 1998. Beyond music, she authored three books, including Remembering Whitney, A Mother's Story of Life, Loss, and The Night the Music Stopped, offering a heartfelt reflection on her daughter's life. Sissy's deep faith remained a cornerstone of her life. As Minister of Sacred Music at New Hope Baptist Church in Newark, she nurtured her community through music and ministry. Her unwavering dedication to family, faith, and her craft left an indelible mark on those around her. Sissy Houston's legacy will endure in the voices she inspired, the lives she touched, and the music she brought to the world. As her family mourns her passing, they have requested privacy during this difficult time. Rest in peace, Sissy. Your voice will forever echo in the hearts of those who loved you. The spotlight of entertainment history dimmed with the passing of Tito Jackson, the soulful guitarist and founding member of the Jackson Five, passed away at the age of, of 70. Tito, whose smooth performances helped shape the group's rise to global superstardom, died from a heart attack while traveling between New Mexico and Oklahoma. His family, including his sons Taj, Tarl, and TJ, remembered him as a loving father and music icon, leaving behind a legacy that spans generations. Born on October 15, 1953, in Gary, Indiana, Tito was the third of Joe and Catherine Jackson's 10 children. His passion for music emerged early when his father gifted him a guitar after catching him experimenting with his own. That moment marked the beginning of a musical journey that would evolve into the Jackson Five. Alongside brothers Michael, Jackie, Jermaine, and Marlon, Tito brought rhythm and heart to the band's string of Gnome One hits like I Want You Back and ABC. Though Michael's charisma often stole the spotlight, Tito's steady guitar playing and choreography were essential to the group's charm. The Jackson 5's success extended into the 1970s, evolving into the Jacksons after moving to Epic Records. Tito continued to contribute to the group's hits, such as Shake Your Body, Down to the Ground, and State of Shock. Even after Michael's departure from the group, Tito and his brothers found new ways to share their music with audiences worldwide, performing at festivals and recording new material into their later years. Outside of his family's legacy, Tito forged his own path in blues music, recording two solo albums, Tito Time and Under Your Spell. A late bloomer as a solo artist, he embraced the blues tradition that had inspired him from childhood, collaborating with legends like Stevie Wonder and George Benson. Tito Jackson's contributions to music and his family's legacy will endure, 
reflecting the joy and rhythm he brought to fans around the world. As his loved ones carry on his memory, the message he embodied, love one another, will remain a lasting tribute. Rest in peace, Tito. Your music will continue to move hearts and feet for generations to come. The spotlight of entertainment dimmed with the passing of Catherine Cat Glover, the vibrant dancer, singer, and muse of Prince during his Sign of the Times and Love Sexy eras. Glover, known for her magnetic onstage presence and collaborations with the music icon, died at 60. Her family confirmed the news on her official Facebook page, requesting privacy during this time. No cause of death has been disclosed. Glover's tenure with Prince, though brief, left an indelible mark on his legacy. Joining his band in 1986, she became an energetic fixture of his electrifying performances. She danced, sang, and even rapped on stage, most notably delivering the rap in Prince's 1988 hit, Alphabet Street. Glover's dynamic chemistry with Prince is immortalized in his Sign of the Times concert film, where her performance embodied the playful yet bold spirit of that era. Her presence extended to several iconic Prince music videos, including You Got the Look and I Could Never Take the Place of Your Man. In these moments, Glover's charisma and fiery demeanor matched Prince's creative genius, making her a memorable part of his visual storytelling. Born in Chicago in 1964, Glover began dancing at the age of five. Before her collaboration with Prince, she gained national recognition on Star Search, where she and her dance partner, Patrick Allen, performing as Pat and Cat, dominated the competition. Though they didn't win the final round, her performance caught the attention of industry legends. David Bowie invited her to join his Glass Spider tour, but she chose to work with Prince, cementing her place in pop history. Beyond her time with Prince, Glover continued as a dancer and choreographer, releasing a 1989 single, Catwoman, produced by Tim Simenon. Though a solo album was planned during her time with Prince, it was never released. Glover's legacy is one of passion, artistry, and fearlessness. As fans and loved ones remember her, they celebrate a life lived boldly, on stage and beyond. Rest in peace, Cat. Your spirit will forever dance among the stars. The spotlight of entertainment news dimmed with the passing of Dame Maggie Smith, an actress whose talent graced both stage and screen for over seven decades. Smith, celebrated for her roles in Downton Abbey and the Harry Potter series, passed away peacefully at the age of 89, surrounded by family at a hospital in London. Born on December 28, 1934, in Ilford, Essex, Smith's early years hinted at the brilliance to come. She studied at the Oxford Playhouse School and made her Broadway debut in 1956's New Faces. Smith quickly rose to prominence, earning acclaim in theater with standout performances in classics such as Othello, Hedda Gabler, and Private Lives. Her versatility shone in comedic and dramatic roles alike, securing her a Tony Award for Lettuce and Lovage. Smith's film career was equally storied. She earned her first Academy Award for The Prime of Miss Jean Brody, 1969, and won a second for her supporting role in California Suite, 1978. Other standout performances included roles in A Room with a View, Gosford Park, and The Best Exotic Marigold Hotel. Her portrayal of Professor Minerva McGonagall in the Harry Potter series endeared her to a new generation of fans. Smith's career reached another peak with her role as the sharp-tongued Dowager Countess of Grantham in Downton Abbey, earning her two Emmy Awards and cementing her as a television icon. Despite a diagnosis of breast cancer during the production of Harry Potter, Smith made a full recovery, continuing to act well into her later years. A dame commander of the British Empire, Smith's work transcended genres and generations. Known for her wit and charm, both on screen and off, she was admired not only for her craft, but also for her grace in navigating the demands of fame. Smith is survived by her two sons, 
actors Toby Stevens and Chris Larkin, and five grandchildren. Her legacy lives on in the many unforgettable characters she brought to life and the indelible mark she left on the arts. Rest in peace, Dame Maggie Smith. Your brilliance will shine forever. The spotlight of country music dimmed with the passing of Chris Christopherson, a legend whose songs and on-screen charm defined an era. Christopherson, 88, passed away at his home in Maui, Hawaii, surrounded by family. His family described his final moments as peaceful and filled with love. Christopherson's legacy is cemented not only in music, but also in film. He rose to fame with hits like Me and Bobby McGee, Sunday Morning Coming Down, and Help Me Make It Through the Night, each song redefining country music's emotional depth. His collaborations with Janis Joplin, Johnny Cash, and Willie Nelson solidified his place among the greats. As a member of the Highwaymen, Christofferson, alongside Cash, Nelson, and Waylon Jennings, became a cornerstone of the outlaw country movement. In Hollywood, Christofferson's rugged charisma found a home. His portrayal of a washed-up musician in A Star is Born, 1976, earned him a Golden Globe, and roles in Alice Doesn't Live Here Anymore and Pat Garrett and Billy the Kid showcased his depth. He later brought his gravitas to the Blade series, introducing himself to a new generation of fans. Born on June 22, 1936 in Brownsville, Texas, Christofferson was a Rhodes Scholar and military officer before giving it all up to pursue music in Nashville. The story of him landing a helicopter in Johnny Cash's yard with demo tapes is now part of country music folklore, symbolizing his audacious spirit. Despite battles with addiction and health challenges, including Lyme disease, Christofferson continued to perform, with his music evolving over decades. He was inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame in 2004 and honored with a Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award in 2015. Christofferson is survived by his wife, Lisa, and eight children. His family encouraged fans to look for a rainbow and remember the joy he brought into the world. As his songs continue to resonate, Christofferson's voice will echo for generations, a testament to a life lived fearlessly. The world of film and television has lost a beloved presence with the passing of Bill Cobbs. Known for his commanding roles across genres, Cobbs passed away at his home in Riverside, California, from natural causes. He was 90 years old. Cobbs's career, spanning more than five decades, was filled with memorable performances. A master of both comedy and drama, he became known for his role as the wise security guard Reginald in Night at the Museum, and as Moses, the mystical clockkeeper, in The Coen Brothers, the Hudsucker Proxy. Audiences also embraced him as the compassionate coach in Air Bud and Whitney Houston's manager in The Bodyguard. His diverse credits showcased his range, from jazz pianist roles in That Thing You Do to appearances in Oz the Great and Powerful. Born Wilbert Francisco Cobbs on June 16, 1934 in Cleveland, Ohio, Cobbs explored multiple careers before finding his passion for acting. After serving in the U.S. Air Force for eight years and working for IBM, he discovered theater at Cleveland's Karamu House. His move to New York led him to join the Negro Ensemble Company, performing alongside legends like Ossie Davis and Ruby Dee. Cobbs's film debut came in 1974 with a small role in The Taking of Pelham 123. This marked the beginning of a prolific career in both film and television, including standout performances in The Cotton Club, Trading Places, and Ghosts of Mississippi. On television, he became a familiar face, appearing in The Drew Carey Show, Star Trek Enterprise, and The Sopranos, among others. Throughout his career, Cobbs brought grace and depth to every role, capturing the hearts of audiences with his wisdom and warmth. He is survived by his wife, children, and grandchildren, leaving behind a legacy of diverse, heartfelt performances. Bill Cobbs's impact will endure as his roles continue to inspire and entertain. As the curtain closes on his extraordinary life, 
the joy and talent he shared with the world will remain timeless. Rest in peace, Bill. Your light will continue to shine on screen for generations to come. The spotlight of entertainment news dimmed a little brighter with the passing of a seasoned character actor. Nicholas Pryor, known for his roles in Risky Business and Beverly Hills 90210, passed away at the age of 89 after a battle with cancer. A familiar face on stage, film, and television, Pryor's career spanned nearly seven decades, leaving an indelible mark on Hollywood. Born Nicholas David Probst on January 28, 1935, in Baltimore, Maryland, Pryor pursued acting from a young age. He honed his craft at Yale University and the Oregon Shakespeare Festival, appearing in numerous theater productions before moving to Broadway in the 1950s. Though his early stage performances were short-lived, Pryor's persistence led to a prolific career in television and film. Pryor's breakout film role came in the 1983 classic Risky Business, where he portrayed Tom Cruise's overbearing father, a character that became a cultural touchstone for the pressures of suburban family life. He continued to charm audiences as Chancellor Milton Arnold, the father of Claire Arnold, on Beverly Hills, 90210, from 1994 to 1997. His versatility shone in dramatic films like Less Than Zero, 1987, and Damien, Omen 2, 1978, as well as comedies such as Airplane, 1980. Television was another cornerstone of Pryor's career, where he appeared in numerous soap operas, including Another World and Port Charles. His more than 170 acting credits also featured guest spots on iconic series such as M.A.S.H., The West Wing, and St. Elsewhere, as well as recent appearances in Dr. Sleep, 2019, and Halloween Kills, 2021. Despite his extensive career, Pryor remained humble. In a note prepared for after his passing, he expressed gratitude for a lifetime spent doing what he loved. Pryor is survived by his wife, actress Christine Belford, his daughter Stacy, and grandchildren August and Avril. As Hollywood bids farewell to this stalwart performer, Nicholas Pryor leaves behind a legacy of dedication, talent, and unforgettable performances that will continue to captivate audiences for years to come. Rest in peace, Nicholas. Your work lives on. The spotlight of Hollywood nostalgia has dimmed with the passing of John Ashton, a beloved character actor best known for his role as Sergeant John Taggart in the Beverly Hills Cop franchise. Ashton, 76, passed away in Fort Collins, Colorado, as confirmed by his family. No cause of death was disclosed. Ashton's career spanned over five decades, leaving an enduring mark on film and television. His most iconic portrayal came in Beverly Hills Cop, 1984, and its sequel, where he played the by-the-book detective Taggart, reluctantly teaming up with Eddie Murphy's freewheeling Axel Foley. Ashton returned to the franchise earlier in 2024 for Netflix's Beverly Hills Cop Axel F, delivering one final nostalgic performance that delighted fans. Beyond Beverly Hills Cop, Ashton showcased his talent in films like Midnight Run, 1988, where he played a rival bounty hunter opposite Robert De Niro. Known for his natural, no-nonsense acting style, Ashton once recalled his audition with De Niro, where their off-script banter secured him the role. He wanted someone to stand up to him, and I gave it right back, Ashton said, reflecting on the moment with pride. Throughout his career, Ashton seamlessly moved between television and film, with appearances in projects such as Gone Baby Gone, Little Big League, and numerous TV series. His ability to portray gruff but endearing characters made him a favorite among audiences and peers alike. Born on February 22, 1948, in Springfield, Massachusetts, Ashton brought depth to every role he played, often portraying lawmen or underdogs with a relatable vulnerability. 
His charm, humor, and authenticity resonated on screen, endearing him to generations of moviegoers. Ashton is survived by his wife, Robin Hoy, with whom he shared 24 years of marriage, two children, three stepchildren, and a grandson, along with two sisters and a brother. His passing leaves a void in the industry, but his memorable performances will continue to entertain for years to come. Rest in peace, John Ashton. Your legacy, much like the beloved characters you portrayed, will never be forgotten. Breaking news of the day. News 1. Jamie Foxx made a triumphant return to the stand-up comedy stage in Atlanta, marking his first major performance since a serious medical emergency in 2023. The three-night engagement, part of his upcoming Netflix special titled What Had Happened Was, blended humor with heartfelt moments as Fox shared his personal journey. Backstage, Fox was joined by Gail King and a group of friends who cheered as he opened a bottle of champagne to celebrate the milestone. You landed on the moon, man. Be so proud, Fox told his entourage, beaming with pride. King, filming the moment, asked how he felt after the shows. It was excruciating opening those wounds every night, Fox admitted, but he added that the audience's response made it all worth it. Reflecting on his experience, Fox joked, My next jokes will start with knock knock. I'll do an hour and a half of knock knock jokes. The crowd burst into laughter at his promise to keep things light moving forward. Though the release date for the special is still under wraps, Fox closed the night on an optimistic note, saying, Let's sit back, watch it, and build toward a newer, brighter, and healthier future. News 2 A viral rumor claiming Cher had passed away sent shockwaves through social media on Saturday, leaving fans scrambling for answers. The false report began circulating when an anonymous post on X, formerly Twitter, claimed the iconic singer and actress had died. However, Cher, 78, quickly put those rumors to rest with a message to her followers. Don't believe everything you read, she posted on X later that afternoon. I'm alive, well, and feeling fabulous. Love you all. Her spokesperson also released a brief statement, reassuring fans. Cher is healthy and in good spirits. Please disregard any misleading information spreading online. The incident prompted an outpouring of both concern and relief from fans, many of whom took to social media to express their gratitude for Cher's quick response. Thank goodness she's okay. You had us worried, Cher, one fan wrote. False rumors like these are not uncommon, with other celebrities also being subject to similar hoaxes in recent years. Cher, known for her vibrant personality and unwavering connection with her fans, ended her message with a playful note. I plan on sticking around for a long time. Sorry to disappoint the rumor mill, 